and good evening to my weekly eco chat. I am um, happy to welcome you here on International Women's Day and I hope you are all well. I'm just uh, doing my technical thing that I'm not very good at but hopefully it's sorted. Um, so hello and thank you to those who are joining me live and thank you to those who will be watching on catch up later on um, this week, next week or whenever it is that you choose to join me. Um, just for those of you who don't know, my name is Jen, I am the owner and founder of Eco Living Ideas and um, my mission in life at the moment is to create a community and a platform where my customers and followers can come to either start or continue on their eco journey with ease and with fulfillment and satisfaction and I do that through providing um, a community where they can come and ask for help and I provide a lot of facts and figures and useful information as well as some gorgeous eco-friendly products um, which people love and um, yeah it makes the whole process so much easier. So these eco chats, I think we are now on week eight, which is very exciting. And um, I mentioned last week, I'm always open to suggestions of future topics to discuss. Um, this week I have a guest on with me, but I've not got anything planned for next week. So if there is a particular eco topic, that could be a type of product or a, um, a wider generic sort of conversation then please let me know and I will get something prepared for another week. I also have some amazing things going on at Eco Living Ideas so I've got um, my subscription box which is just launched um, which I'm very excited about and my current subscribers are loving and are all very happy with the products they receive I've also got a brand new shampoo bar that's going in next month's box which I used last night and was divine and it's the first shampoo bar that I've used without any issues at all um, so I was very happy with that and yeah those who are subscribed will get a sample of that in their next box. I've also and this is something that I've just been sat working on and I nearly missed my uh, my live slot um, is the home detox clinic and this is a course which is a very in-depth um, sort of way to detox your home and um, make every aspect of it eco-friendly. So we will be covering um, banking and investments and utilities, kitchen, clothing. This is going to be a full, um, full range of information and resources and downloadable checklists and audits and things and it's a really exciting project and that is going live in April and um, so if you would like to know a little bit more about that then please do let me know. I am just waiting for my guest to arrive. I'm hoping that she uh, will be here soon. So I'm going to, sorry I'll keep, um, there we are. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to keep talking for too much longer because I would like Perfect timing. So, everybody, this is Lei. She has recently, sort of during lockdown one, changed her lifestyle and is now living a thrifty lifestyle. And through that, she has started a blog and shares hints and tips and advice on how to live a healthier happier and more fulfilling lifestyle um, without spending um, all of your money um, and that has evolved into her eco journey. Um, later when we finish the chat we will Lay will share her Instagram, her Facebook group and her website so you can go and have a read of some of the amazing content that um, she shares with her followers. But for now, welcome and thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you, Jen. That's all right. So we'll jump straight into it. Um, so first off, tell me a little bit more about yourself. Where are you on your eco journey and sort of what started you on that path? Well, I was born in Germany, moved to the UK 2003 and done my degree in biomedical science, then a master's in 
Infection and immunity. Had my little girl Yasmin, she's now seven years old, moved to the Isle of Wight, um, started my blog, like you said, um, last summer uh, during the lockdown. And that's about the same time when I actually started my eco journey. Um, okay. I was taking part with my daughter in this um, event called Ocean Day, yeah. um, World Ocean Day. I think it was on the 8th of June or July, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's part of my daughter's um, uh, school um, activity. And okay. I found out so much about microplastics and, you know, how it's affecting our food, such as seafoods. And I found out about how animals, you know, die from strangulation through plastic bits or um, plastic bags. Yeah. And I thought, wow, I didn't really know it's affecting the wildlife this much. much yeah. And yeah, so I started watching some programs on Netflix, some documentaries, um, and I started learning more about it and thinking, we are eating these microbeads as well when they've been consumed by these fishes and yeah. i had no idea you know and i'm thinking <laughs> that's why we're all having these problems with hormones and all sorts of things yeah. um it's quite so, shocking when you when you sort of look into it it is yeah it can yes. be quite horrifying yes and um yeah and the landfills as well they're full with plastics and they're all our plastics get shipped to China or Malaysia or some other places and it's all stored there. And I'm thinking, why? Why do we need all this plastic? Is there a way of, you know, reducing it, reusing something? Why do we keep producing this plastic? For what? You yeah, know? absolutely. So what have you found sort of the most interesting part or the, the part of your journey that you've enjoyed the most so far? Well, I enjoy learning. I generally love learning. So anything I like to know, um, you know, because you cannot know everything. So I like to learn about anything and everything. So learning about other people's eco journeys as well. So sometimes I see something and think, oh, actually, I could try this, yeah. you know, um, and then I go away and think about it, try it. And I'm thinking, well, this might work for me or this might not work for me. And I enjoy trying new things. Um, recently, I've been collaborating with Aurora. They made these hand poured candles and they're okay. eco friendly as well. And I had no idea about paraffin wax. So, yeah. Jack has filled me <laughs> in about this paraffin wax. And I used to love Yankee candles. I'm thinking, yeah. oh, I didn't know, you know, mm. it's toxic. We're breathing it in. Why, why are we using yeah. these things? So, I've done my research as well on soy wax and um and the paraffin wax and i found out soy wax one it's non-toxic two it lasts longer and three it smells better as well yeah so yeah I yeah like i remember i, I remember learning that wax. stuff as well and just being like ah because i love candles yes, a bit a lot of these candles, things really. a lot of us don't know about these things so i'm thinking we're always learning something new yeah. and that's one part I really enjoy about this journey as well. I'm learning something new from everyone speaking to you about the menstrual cup, for instance. And yes. um, I've placed an order for the yes. moon cup because I'm thinking, you know, oh, I'm not comfortable with the other brands, but I still give it a go. After speaking to you, I feel a lot more comfortable. Before yeah. I was like thinking, oh, I'm not too sure putting this inside my body. This is a bit weird, you know? <laughs> and I enjoy sharing my experiences of what has worked, what hasn't worked for me. Yeah. And yeah, there's so many ways you can, you know, make these little swaps and those little changes make a huge difference. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, um, well, one, well. yeah, one of the things um, I really enjoyed is the eco egg, as you probably know, yeah. you know, I'm thinking that, that, that thing is so small and it just fits in the cupboard it doesn't take much space yeah. it's eco-friendly 
budget friendly. I mean, that's all a win-win situation, isn't it? Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what is there anything that you found particularly difficult um, to, to either swap or to sort of find out research wise? Um, well, I find because I'm quite early on, on my journey, I don't know what is good and what isn't good. So there's so many products out there, but yeah. which is the best product for, yeah. I don't know, cleaning, for instance, or skincare or, you know, anything. I, yeah. I still, I'm still learning um, about products and I'm looking at your group as well, which I really like because it's like a little community. You can ask questions yeah. without feeling a bit strange. Um, one thing at the beginning, before I started my eco journey, it was the hippie word you know <laughs> eco-friendly and hippie and it's like as soon as you think oh eco-friendly at first i was thinking oh that eco-friendly that's a hippie thing you know <laughs> because it's a stereotypical thing everyone I says think that that stereotype is definitely lessening over time i mean um i know sort of when i started my journey three years ago it was like people who say what are you talking about like where has that come from or you you must be making that up that can't be real and actually i've noticed over the time and it's maybe because i have a different community around me now mm -hmm. but there is definitely less of that it's weird thing although some yes. people do look at you like you're weird still but <laughs> and another thing i found i well i sometimes still struggle with it is i'm not doing enough i always think i'm not doing enough what can i do what can i change without feeling uncomfortable changing um that was my biggest struggle to begin with now i usually swap one thing or the other thing here and there i take my time i go my pace i'm not letting anyone push me as well and i find yeah. that way is the best way because Absolutely. if you're trying to change too much, you just revert back to your old self. Yeah, um, it gets, I did I did an eco chat on it a few weeks ago, actually, about the overwhelm of and sort of the different processes that in the stages you go through of your journey. And mm -hmm. it is, you do, everybody does it, sort of that whole, like, I can't do it all. There's too, there's too much to do. And then you do a lot and you get to that of not done enough still. And it is, yeah, it's difficult. But like you said before, all the small changes add up. And if exactly. you make one change a month, every month for the rest of your life, then that's going to have a Exactly. Impact. I mean, one of the things I was so amazed about is the Brita filter that I was using, or I'm still using. I'm actually using it right now here. Um, I didn't know how much plastic I was actually throwing out there. Um, using plastic bottles, water, water bottles, um, okay. bottled water, I was drinking about three to four large bottles a day. And I never really thought of it much, you know, I thought oh, it's yeah. just a plastic bottle. But I never thought of the consequences. And then I done a calculation and I found I produce about 230 kilos Oh, wow. of plastic waste just the bottle not anything else included just ah, the plastic bottle. is that a year yeah a year yeah. yes oh my and gosh I was thinking, oh my goodness my carbon footprint is huge yeah. just that little part and then i decided you know what i'm i'm trying the um brita filter again especially because i've done a research project on filters water filters in general at okay. university and I found out Brita was the best at filtering out all the chemicals and the um, bacteria as well. And I right. felt like, oh, that's amazing. Whereas other brands, they did do what they said they would do, but they're yeah. not as effective. So hence, I went back with the Brita. I haven't, I haven't changed back to the bottled water. I've would you say that my... your, is that your favorite eco swap then? Would you say? Oh, I've got too many, Jen. I got too many. I mean, the eco egg <laughs> is one of my favorite. Uh, the Brita filter, definitely. I've been using it daily. Um, I think just this uh, microfiber cloth. Before I used to use just kitchen towel, and I oh, just okay. spin it, and I would go through a kitchen roll about one a day, one roll a day 
it, oh it's insane. Gosh. Exactly. And with these things, I'm thinking, how come I didn't do this before? I finished yeah. using it. Yeah. I just chuck it in the it. laundry bin. Exactly. Not just that as well. You know, all the materials that go into making these um, kitchen rolls. Yeah. I don't use them anymore. So it will cut down on, on the yeah, um, plants absolutely. or anything or trees, you know, out there. So, yeah, I, that, I think those are my favorite ones. And, oh, another thing I'm struggling with is, have you heard of Soflora? Yes. I know they're not good. The chemicals in there are not good. I'm struggling to find a concentrated disinfectant okay. that is eco-friendly, um, non-toxic, plant-based. Yeah. I'm still looking for something like this. I mean, I like to use Method. Um, yeah. The products, I think they're brilliant. But even then, they're still this plastic bottle, which annoys me, really. Yeah, they're refills, though, aren't they? Method do refills, I think. They do do refills, but then I find they're more expensive than the actual, you know, if you get they're the... Just, yeah. Yes, well, exactly. So I'm thinking it I'm really I'm makes no point. sense yeah oh yeah thank you yeah, i would absolutely. love to find something cheaper and something just as effective but yeah without the packaging if possible yeah cool it's a good one i think it is um yeah it's one of those things that kind of it, it, as we say it's a, a continuous change isn't it it's it's always researching the next product yes. figuring out and when you've got yes. that sorted and you found something happy with then you look at the next part so exactly i mean like i made the swap from Dettol, you know the Dettol sprays you can buy yeah. in the yeah. spray bottles. I made it. I made the swap to concentrated disinfectant because I'm thinking the bottles itself they're tiny, they're this small, and you can get so many out of them. And I just okay. refill the Dettol bottle and um, dilute it with water. But even then, you know, I know it's helping the um, you know environment a little bit, but it's yeah, still it's not more. good enough. There's something. Yeah. I'm not too happy about with that. Well, we will look into it for you. Cool. Thank right. So you. tell us tell us about your blog. Tell us more about My that. My blog is called The Thrifty Island Girl. I started it in the lockdown as well. So that was July I started my blog. And the aim of the blog is to help as many people as possible to, you know, forget about the budget and find other ways to cut you know cost in their living without having to change too much of their lifestyle because okay i personally i don't really like having to make big changes i still like yeah. buying good quality items but then i don't really want to say well you can't go out or you can't go yeah. eating out i don't want a big lifestyle change so i advise people where they could you know make small changes but then they can make big savings as well. Okay, excellent. And we'll, we'll, we'll make sure you post a link to that um, in the comments so people can go and have a read. Thank of some you. Things. And then I have to ask you about your uh, TV debut appearance. <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about that and how you came to be on there. I've been on Bargain Brits and Benefits. It's on Channel 5. Um, I was on episode 3. So that's okay. still on the channel 5 website and i was posting about saving money and using coupons on a group as far as i remember and then there was a lady called becky that spotted me and messaged me saying hey um i'm i'm planning to you know make this uh, show would you be interested to you know take part at first I wasn't too sure about it and then she spoke about my blog and you know how it all fits in and um, helping people stretch their money so I thought yeah. eventually I was starting to think mm, it would be interesting <laughs> but I still don't trust this one because obviously if you just get a random DM you would think yeah. who is that it could be anybody so I looked into her who she actually was and then eventually got in contact and yeah that's amazing how it started fantastic and was that sort of quite early on in your blogging career <laughs> about yes about three months later oh right very good 
Cool. So finally, before we wrap up, have you got any advice to people that are starting out on their eco journey? What would your biggest piece of advice be? My biggest piece of advice would be take it easy. Don't, you know, don't be too harsh on yourself. One swap is better than no swap. So, you know, go as slow or as fast as you're comfortable with. Um, yeah, that's my biggest advice, I would say. Um, totally agree. <laughs> don't let people bully you into doing something you're not happy with because occasionally you will get people that are so passionate there's nothing wrong with these people they're just so passionate and they just want you to make lots and lots of changes but sometimes yeah. you just don't feel comfortable with it so you know just do the things that you're comfortable with and the things that you're not comfortable with just leave it and maybe okay. change it another time when you are ready fantastic advice absolutely brilliant well thank you so much for joining me this evening um thank we've you had very a few much. people watching live and i'm sure there'll be plenty more catching up so if anyone does have any questions and um, for lay please write them in the comments and she will get back to you over the next few days and things um and look out for those links in the comments as well for um the blog and the website and stuff like that but thank you so so much and i will speak to you thanks very, very soon. much jen thank, thank you, you. Yeah. bye bye, bye.